What's up guys, my name is Ticknobo here for Troubleshoots and today I'll be going through a solution to a problem that I used to have before I started recording with a set frame rate using OBS. I mainly had this issue with the Bandicam and a bunch of other programs like that. Basically, when you're playing games, you obviously have a variable refresh rate. It's not always locked to 60, especially if your PC is struggling to reach that 60 FPS. Your capture software may take only 50 FPS or 40 FPS and dips and drops, and that can cause quite a bit of video audio desync when you get to editing it in something like Premiere Pro. So these are all linked together, they're one video file, but as you can see, the video file ends long before the audio file. So in the beginning of the video, audio and video are synced, or at least mostly. It's a bit off, but it's mostly correct. There, there was an explosion on screen, one, two, three, now you heard the actual explosion. So it's pretty easy to fix if you're taking out just this part over here, you may want to unlink it and then say sync up the audio and video manually so that when the explosion actually happens, you hear it as well. But that's a bit difficult to do when you say go forwards 10 minutes and then all of a sudden you're hearing things from like 15, 20 minutes before it actually happened in a couple of hour long recordings. That's a hell of a lot to get through and fix. So how exactly do you fix this issue? Say that it was just a single MP4 file with three audio tracks or one audio track. How do you fix audio video desync inside of Premiere Pro? Well, Premiere Pro, like other software, works on a constant frame rate. Whatever you set your project to, that will be the frame rate that your video should match. If I go to sequence settings, you can see it's got a 60 FPS time code, time base 60 frames per second. If it drops below that point during any part of the video, it'll automatically take the future frames and sort of crush them next to each other to always match that 60 FPS target. So that is something that's built into Premiere Pro and it's not something that you can disable. Premiere Pro is set to CFR only constant frame rate and not a variable frame rate. So say that you have a variable frame rate recording, let's say this one over here at the very top. How exactly do you get this into a constant frame rate recording so that the time will actually match when you put it inside of Premiere Pro? Now for this example, I've had to use FFmpeg to get rid of duplicate frames to demonstrate this happening, but this is exactly what would have happened if I recorded this video with something like Bandicam or something else that's not set up properly that has got VFR selected instead of CFR. So I did that by running a command that I may get to in another video, but how exactly do you undo this VFR and put it back into a constant frame rate video file and sort of generate duplicate frames to make sure that it always matches 60 frames per second so that Premiere Pro likes it? Well, it's actually super simple. So first of all, you'll need FFmpeg downloaded and installed. There's a link in the video description that takes you to another video of mine showing you how to install FFmpeg on Windows. Next up, once you have it installed, at the very top, you'll be typing in CMD and hitting enter. This will open command prompt inside of this folder over here automatically. Then we'll go ahead and type in FFmpeg space hyphen I space and inverted commas. Here we'll go back to the folder and copy the name of the video we want to use as an input. We'll paste it in and then we'll close inverted commas. Then we'll put space hyphen vsync vsync space one space hyphen CRF and we'll go with a CRF of about 20 or 19. This is what a lot of people recommend and it should give you plus minus the same sort of video quality without really dropping too much but the video file size may change quite a bit from the original. Space hyphen R and this is where we put in the frame rate so we'll go with 60 space hyphen C colon V and we'll go LIBX 264, meaning that we'll be using X264. Now, as far as I know, there might be NVENC and stuff like that for FFmpeg, but to keep it simple, we'll just go with this to make sure that it works. Space hyphen preset, ultra fast, because we're using a lowish CRF, which is a constant rate factor, meaning that the quality will be quite good already, and we shouldn't be losing too much. In fact, we'll be losing hardly anything at 19. So preset, ultra fast, space hyphen C, colon A, copy, and then we'll go space hyphen map, zero, colon, zero, meaning that we'll keep all of the audio tracks as is. Then we'll go space, inverted commas, and we'll give it an output file. So we'll call it output.mp4. Close inverted commas, and we'll hit enter. 
Now, of course, an output file already exists, so we want to overwrite. So we'll just hit Y and press Enter. Now, all we have to do is wait for this to finish from a VFR to CFR. And there we have it, it finished. And now we have the output.mp4 here. Unfortunately, when I paused the video, I talked about it finishing and I ended up closing that CMD window. However, it does say a message when it's finished and it goes back to a state where you can start typing. However, as you can see, output.mp4 is about a gigabyte to about 1.3 gigs bigger than the previous file. It is exactly the same length, quote unquote, but there are a ton more frames inside of it because it is a CFR video instead of V. EFR, meaning that the constant frame rate is actually set and working now. If we were to go into the video and go frame by frame by hitting something like E in VLC, you'll see that there's quite a few duplicate frames when we actually get to them. That means that instead of it just skipping those frames outright and putting the video audio out of sync, it'll actually just freeze for a couple of microseconds, like a really short amount of times that people won't be able to recognize. So if I simply just add it into my timeline here next to the original bit of footage, you can see that there's quite a lot of missed frames that are now included. A full minute and a half of frames that were missing from the original. And in fact, we can actually go and replace that previous bit of footage because it is now actually set up properly and it will be perfectly in sync if you were to skip forward to say to an explosion, there it is perfectly in sync, skipping ahead to over here. Everything is perfectly in sync and working as it should be. So that's great. Now that you've fixed the issue with the video file that came out of something like Shadowplay, Bandicam, or something else that you haven't set up to be constant frame rate or you aren't able to, I would highly recommend that you switch across to another program like OBS where you can choose a constant frame rate so that you never have this issue to begin with. Of course, that'll save you a ton of time. Instead of leaving your PC on the whole night to crunch through hours and hours of video, you can just have it working from the get-go. So I would highly recommend you look into an alternative that includes CFR recording, constant frame rate recording. That being said, I don't think NVIDIA Shadowplay, which is built into the NVIDIA driver, has an option for constant frame rate. I think it's locked to VFR, but that's up to you guys to find out. This is just a temporary solution that I do not recommend you use for every bit of footage that you create from this point onwards. Instead, fix your issue before you have it. Anyways, my name has been Technobo here for Troubleshoots, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!